CCWM. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, am I coming in okay? Yeah, you're coming in fine. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to call you back in about five minutes after news, rather than to keep you holding, because it'll be about ten minutes before we come to you. Is that all right? I just That's... wanted to make sure that I've got the number and everything was going to work okay. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll call you back in a few minutes okay. then. Okay. See you in a bit. Bye bye. bye. This is Mark. Hello, Mark. It's Matt here from BBC in England. You okay? <laughs> okay. How are you guys? Not too bad at all. Uh, can I just pop you on hold, fella, and then you'll be with Molly after the news? Sure. Cheers, Mark. Okay. It takes a lot of hard work. But there's a real... Mark, we're going to get to you in around five minutes. Are you okay to hold on? Yeah, that's fine. Cheers. Earlier this week, the late show MP Michael Fabricant will visit... Kelly Marie. Love that song. Feels like I'm in love. We have your 60th finale in about half an hour's time. Don't mind telling you, there's a little bit of Desmond Decker in there. Always good music. Good news news as well, very shortly, where we counteract. Well, life, really. With a little bit of good news from uh, local, national, international, your good news as well. We'll do that for you very, very shortly. Now, let's get our international guest on, on Saturday breakfast. Very, very much looking forward to introducing you to Mark Sargent. We all love a good conspiracy theory. We talk about it loads here on BBC WM. Um... Now, Mark believes in what I thought had been disproved centuries ago, but apparently, if, if you believe this, there's been a massive cover-up going back a long time. Mark believes the world is flat. The world is flat. And he's actually been in the national news, if not international, really heavily this week. I think it was all sparked off by Freddie Flintoff, for some reason, saying he believed the world was flat. Freddie. Um, and there's been, there's been massive debates about it, and Mark believes those little pictures that you see, the pretty pictures from space, have all been manipulated to ensure that we believe the world is round. NASA's involved. And I, I, one would imagine, we're about to find out, I think Mark thinks the whole moon landing um, thing is fake too. Let us go right over to Seattle, across the pond, and welcome our Mark. Good morning. Well, actually, no... Good evening, because I know you've stayed up really late to speak to us where you are, but hello and a warm welcome, Mark. Oh, oh it's so late. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's about midnight where you are. Oh, it's not so bad. And thank you. I, I can't thank you enough for having me, by the way. Oh, no, you're more than welcome. I find you fascinating before, we, before we've even spoken. <laughs> so I saw you on the telly in the week, and... Oh, yeah, going up against Piers Morgan and one of our uh, astronauts. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Well, firstly, well done for going up against Piers Morgan. I, I, um, did, I actually didn't know it was going to be him until almost last minute. <laughs> it was like, ah, crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, Piers, and I, I think you've done Russell Brand as well this week as well. Yeah, what that was, was Russell like with you? Does he believe or is he a non believer? Uh, he believes that he's a very, very open minded guy. Unfortunately, you know, he's a, he's a comedian through and through. And so he wasn't going to let me roll too long before he decided to chime in and, and do, you know, a couple of his yeah. stints. But that's fine. Russell's Russell. Oh. He's fine. Well, now we're, we're approaching you, and everybody listening hopefully is approaching you firstly with an open mind. Yes. All right. Right. So, for those that haven't heard of you and the theory, yeah. just lay out the basics, Mark, of, of what you think. Okay, the basics. You're not on a globe. You've never been on a globe. You are living in, let's just call it a giant structure, a giant building with an artificial ocean on the inside, a shoreline all the way around, and some continents laying on the center. A building so large, as a matter of fact, that the powers that be didn't even find the outer walls or the upper ceiling until the late 1950s. And then they decided, okay, let's just keep a wrap on this thing because we don't know how civilization will react. And that's basically the short version of it. Who do you think found the outer walls? Oh, it was the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, more specifically, it would be Admiral Richard Byrd during Operation Deep Freeze in 1955 to 1956. They, in fact, the Americans were down there for the better part of 30 years, out, out in the outer outer markers, out, out in Antarctica, looking for this thing. And it, they pretty much had all but given up. And some great footage of Admiral Byrd on television saying, yeah, the whole place is made out of money. And then once they found it, Antarctic became the big mystery continent. They locked it down. Uh, you, you, can, you can go down there. You can spend 10,000 pounds and go to Antarctica right now and have a picture taken with penguins. But 
if you as a corporation try to do anything, it's banned forever. You are forbidden. There was no corporation allowed to do any work in Antarctica since the 1959 treaty. It's not even up for debate until 2041. Outer walls. What what are they made out of then? Are you are you talking like the Truman Show? We're like yeah, I'm, I'm talking exactly like the Truman Show. I mean, I try to use different versions because it doesn't resonate with everybody. You know, the Truman Show is from. I mean, that movie is 20, 20 years old now, from nineteen ninety eight. Brilliant movie if you've never seen it. Yeah. Uh, it but is. you you call, could call it a planetarium, a terrarium, a petri dish, whatever you want to call it. I'm just calling it a big structure. Now, I mean, you're in a big room, is what I'm what I'm saying. But what the outer walls are made out of? Oh, take your pick. Uh, energy field, harmonic frequencies, force field, heavy element, heavy water. I don't know, but they were trying to bust through it ever since they found it back in uh, 1958. The United States and Soviet Union were firing atomic weapons basically straight up for four straight years. And they didn't stop until 1962, and that's when they said, okay, we're just going to militarize space, create the space programs, and just fake this thing as, you know, fake it as long as we can. Outer walls... The, this snow globe in your in your, ah, in your see belief. see you but, mentioned snow globe and I didn't even say snow globe. That's how I envisage you envisage it. Yeah, okay. Built by built by who? And I know you're only going to speculate. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. But but no, who no. Do you think it's been built by? I built it. No, I don't know. The uh, it was built by. It, there's only two ways you can go with this. Either it was built by an advanced civilization, much much higher than ourselves. Or, you know, intelligent design, handprint of God thing. And I'm, and I'm not going to say that, you know, God built it. But if God didn't build it, well, he probably subcontracted out the work. What about the space programs and the pictures that have been beamed back? Uh, proving, well, the, if you believe the pictures, that yeah, the Earth is round. Yeah, do not. And I, I know this is tough coming from me. Although you guys really, I'm really surprised anyone out of the United States believes anything we do over here it's look do not believe the americans especially when it comes to our military programs because the our space program look nasa is dod all the way formed in 1958 right after the the first three atomic weapon tests that we did straight up uh the they had to militarize space and, and it answers a big question because a lot of people say well why would they fake the apollo program why would they fake the moon landing and I, for the longest time i thought you know what I don't have a good enough reason. Now I do. It's not that they wanted to fake the space program. They had to. If they didn't fake the space program, there's a chance that private corporations eventually figure out this structure. And so that's what they did. They, they just took a whole bunch of fake pictures. Remember, you gotta, you gotta remember the very first blue marble shot of Earth. And you can look this up. None of this is secret information. First blue marble shot was taken by the Americans in 1972. You know when the second blue marble shot was taken? Two summers yeah. ago. Two summers ago, it's 43 years, and nobody took a picture of Earth in 43 years. They just milked the same photo year after year. And it was because they were so scared about putting up a, another picture that was fake. So, yeah, it's all fake, all CGI. Mark, we've had Tim Peake on this show. We've, 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 he's not the only one we've had that's been to the International Space Station. <sighs> These astronauts, do you think, they've, they, in your mind, that they've, that they've been contracted to lie? Yeah, absolutely, I do. I mean, look, they're all, they're all military. In fact, the, all, the, all the United States guys, they're all Air Force. Uh, you want to look up stuff in the ISS? Look up something called, uh, I, this is going to sound crazy, but of course this is Flat Earth, right? Look up ISS Hairspray. You want to look up some weird stuff? Look up that. That'll start you down a rabbit hole of all the interior shots that were that have been done inside the ISS. The production value is horrible. Wires that you can see, CGI graphics that screw up all the time, and of course, the hairspray. Because nobody should have hair at all, by the way, in the ISS. Everyone should be shaved. And yet, women are having long hair, no one's wearing hats, no one has their hair pulled back because they have to try to simulate uh, zero G, so they perm their hair. Or at least they did until very, very recently. Anyway, sorry, my little rant. I've just got, no, I like your rants. I like <laughs> them very much. We've just had a text in from Jay. Says, in, our, in essence, uh, Mark isn't wrong. We believe everything we're told from a young age. We never challenge it. But if it's true, wouldn't we all be poisoned by the toxic air because no amount of trees could purify it? 
Uh, good point. And I, what we're talking about here is an automated system and an enclosed system. So when it comes to the air, think of everything as part of a giant, think of it as like a giant terrarium where there's a lot of different systems. No, I think there's some, there is some air purification systems involved, but what seems to be happening, and I don't want to go off a whole different tangent, is the climate change thing appears to be real. Meaning, think about it, you know, cars are just giant furnaces that we've got billions of them running over the last hundred years. And you're wondering why we have erratic weather. Well, it makes much more sense in an enclosed building than it does in a globe. So, oh yeah. And by the way, to, to the person's first point, the conditioning, look, we, we, you grow up, the globe is in your classroom since age six. I don't know what it is over there until you graduate, at least from high school, that's 12 years. That, that is prime grade a conditioning right there but it's only a toy it's only a model everybody's seen everything else in your life you can test uh, even in your studio right now look water is wet fire burns you drop something it falls to the floor that appears to be gravity those things you can test when it comes to the shape of the earth that's something you're told and you've just taken their word for it for 20 25 generations it's fascinating really are you religious yes I am religious, but I, but I fell away from the church for years. So I grew up in a strong Christian home. Uh, then when I went to college, I actually figured out there was more than one religion. And then, uh, then I stayed and then I was really into tech. I was a really big tech guy, a lot, a lot of, a lot of computer stuff. And then when I got into this, this pulled me back into spirituality because really that's, that's the underlying tone, isn't it? Because if this place was built, if it's not this organic globe flying through space that could be wiped at any second, if it's actually a building, if it's actually a structure, then it was created. And if it was created, well, you've never been alone. Isn't that what everybody wants? No, I find that really interesting. I asked you that question because I, I suspected you'd say no, because I don't see how religion could fit in with with your theory. Oh yeah, well, all, all of them actually do. In fact, try to be an atheist and be a flat earther at the same time. It's really, really, really difficult because there's no organic properties to the structure itself. It's just a, you know, a giant planetarium is a giant Truman Show and Truman Show was built. So again, does that mean that, you know, in the Truman Show, uh, you know, that the creator is God hanging out in the moon, just watching you? Well, I mean, I, I still believe that we're being watched. I still believe that there's somebody looking over our shoulder, which I think is a lot more comforting than being in this endless space. You, obviously, clearly, and I've, I've looked at loads of your stuff online as well, firmly a thousand percent believe uh, in what you believe in so oh, yeah. how frustrating is it when a, a lot of people scoff at you call you a nutcase oh no that's that's part how of the do you pro deal with it uh, well for me it's, it's part of the process nobody in the flat earth community starts out as a believer i mean that i don't even know you know i don't know what your stance is but i mean everybody starts out to try to debunk it and because they do that because they start in a negative fashion in a hole by the time they get to the other side they look back at everybody else that's ridiculing them. It's like, yeah, I remember where you were. I was where you were. And people that are listening to this right now, they're going, this is the worst, hor most horrible thing. Look, and I'm not going to be convincing you while you're driving to work and trying not to crash because you're so angry. The I'm, I'm saying that you, you, it's, it's a process. It takes a while. Some people get it in a few days. Some people get it in a few weeks. It's like a marble in a paint can, really. So I don't mind the ridicule. I When, when people ridicule me, I know they're thinking about it. Even Piers on, on his show. Look, I know he was going to take shots at me, but I also know that some of his interns are going to be looking at it, and who knows? You know, Maybe he'll look into it too. Well, I'm open. And uh, the one thing I do agree with you mm -hmm. uh, about regarding Mark is that we, we do, we absolutely do, if you sit, to sit and think about it, we do believe what we're told from an early age. And it's only later in life you think, well, Actually, I, I'll work it out myself. So I'm I'm open to what you're saying. Oops. If for people who, who also have an open mind, where can they go? Where can they find your your evidence? You you, you say you've got evidence. Where oh, can they find that online? There's so much stuff out there. Uh, okay, the first thing you should probably look at, if it was me, because it's my stuff, uh, go look up flat earth, <laughs> flat flat earth clues. And I, I don't I don't want to dismiss the community. The community is absolutely fantastic. It's wonderful. They have so much content, and there's so much content out there. I would look up flat earth clues in YouTube or in Google or whatever search engine you have. Uh, if you're in YouTube, just type in flat earth. 
and you will see a wall of content come your way now. I mean, get remember that back when we started this back in 2015, you looked it up on YouTube, Flat Earth, you may have gotten 50,000 search results. Do you know what it is as of this morning? About 18.5 million. That's a lot. Wow. You know, there's a there's a huge amount of content. Uh, and from there, you'll find my other stuff. I got a book that is actually published by one of your guys out in London. Uh, there's an audio book and I got a little radio show and it's kind of fun. But yeah, Flat Earth Clues will get you started. Absolutely. Well, it's been lovely meeting you this morning. What does the weekend hold for you? What are you doing? Uh, I'm doing more Flat Earth stuff, <laughs> believe oh, it or not. Right. <laughs> I'm doing some more podcasts, making some more videos, you know, just trying to trying to get the word out. So, oh, by well, the way, you guys, by, just one, one last thing. You guys have a, a Flat Earth conference coming up in the UK in a April, as a matter of fact. Oh, do we? Yeah, yeah, look it up. Uh, just look up Flat Earth Conference London. You'll find it. Are it's you coming over? I may come over. I, I may. We'll, we'll see. I, I just did one oh. out over here in the United States, but uh, if I do, I'll let you know before I come. Yeah, do. Keep in touch with us. Yeah, okay. we'd love to speak to you again. Cool. It's been really nice meeting your acquaintance this morning, Mark. Thanks for, well, you know, half past midnight your time, so we'll let you get to bed. I'm oh, so tired. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's totally cool. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. We'll speak again. All righty. Thanks, honey. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mark Sargent. Mark, thanks again. <laughs> thanks, guys. Have a good one. See you later. Thanks right. so much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.